have a model in her. Every mother cannot be a model, although they have certain rights. Maybe that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the Ummahat al Mu'mineen, that the, the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, are the believers, mothers of the believers, so that they can look up to their mother, that my mother was like this, my mother was like this, and I am a man, I should be more actually, you may say, sacrificing or more actually having integrity and thing because the children always take lessons from their mother as they say mothers are actually the first madrasa for them. So Sayyida Khadija al Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, Ummul Mumineen, she as I said was a unique person in the sense that she is the first ever Muslim of this Ummah. Even before Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, even before Sayyidina Ali, Karram Allah Kareem, meaning she was the first person to believe on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was the first person to become a Muslim, actually. Not only amongst women, but amongst men as well. Because the first, when Rasulullah Ali Sallallahu Alaihi came from the cave of Hira, the first person he spoke to was Umm al muminin Sayyidah Khadija al-Kubra. Only then after, then he spoke to his other family matters, Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, Sayyidina Ali, Karram Allah Wajul Kareem, or the, is one of his servants, Sayyidina Zaid, and also then his friend, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq, that came after, although they are the also the first ones to accept Islam. But today we will just learn about some of the characteristics, some of the uh, personality trait of this uh, blessed woman, that she was such that actually that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pleased and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Himself in this dunya declared his pleasure that he was pleased with her. First thing which was in her and which should be in every woman and girl and a man as well, that she was living in a society which was known as a society of Jahiliya. Now as there is Islam, there are some other, for example, moral code and of the modern world. At that time, it was complete ignorance. Few Christians or Jewish people who had knowledge or other were mushrikeen and there was no law and no standard of uh, modesty or you may say, a standard of actually haya or anything like this. So all around the society, there was rampant oppression, immodesty, everyone going after their whatever they like, except few people as I mentioned. So it's like uh, sometime our sisters and daughters and wives come on this, in this country or sometime in Western Europe or sometime actually they uh, come to have, uh, live here, uh, take up the nationality and then they rather than actually keeping their integrity and akhlaq or their values or their deen, they just actually flow with the flow of the society. This really shows the inside of the person. If the inside of the person is good, then it will come out. And if outwardly because of pressures of society or father or brothers, a person is camouflaged and they are as though practicing and being modest, but as soon as they get independent, then they actually show their colors 
This means the color was already in them. It, they are only showing up. So that's why Sayyidina Ali Karram Allah Vajahul Kareem, he said that many people say that wealth changes people, status changes people, wealth changes people. When someone else you see, oh yeah, he was my friend when he was poor, but now he become rich, he changed. Oh, this my relative was uh, sitting with me and doing things and he was humble and now he's got a status, he's got a political status, whatever. Now he does not pay heed to me, he does not. So Sayyidina Ali Karram Allah Wajahahul Kareem, he said people think so that wealth, status, fame, name changes people. But he said, not in all cases, he said that my, because he is the person who is the door of knowledge. He is one of his titles, like every Sahabi have many titles. Say, Abu Bakr have a Siddiq title, Siddiq, for example. Or Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he has his titles. One of the titles of Sayyidina Ali Karram Allah Wajul Kareem is actually Babul Ilm, uh, the door of knowledge. So meaning when he speaks, when he says, not only you learn one thing, but a door of knowledge actually opens, where you can then actually learn many, many other things. That is the meaning of, one of the meaning of door of knowledge, that when you open door, not only, for example, the door open to the mosque, then actually you can see the pulpit, you can see the masjid, you can see people, you can see many things. And some people only are door. For example, outside the door actually. So a person, he is Babul Ilm, the door of knowledge, to where? To the city of the Prophet, Ali Islam. So he said that people say fame and name, status and wealth changes people. He said, I said, no, not always. It only exposes people. They were already of that nature. But because they did not have wealth, they had nothing to show off. So now they're showing up, they already had this trait in them. Now they have status and they are behaving like this. They were already that possessing that behavior, but that was hidden in them. So it's very, very difficult sometimes to know who your friend is, only actually circumstances. Even Allah Jalla Majduhu, you see, everyone said, I am a uh, servant of Allah and actually Allah, you are our Lord in the world of spirits. But Allah Zawajal then sends and makes people go through different situations, wealth, health, illness, problems, difficulties, all things to know not for Allah, he already knows, but actually for us to show that who really his friend, uh, his friends are, or who are, are loyal. So, coming back to Sayyida Khadijatul Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was living in such a society which has no much values, and she had wealth, her father was actually one of the richest person of uh, Mecca, she had luxury life, she had. But even then, she kept her limits, even though there was no, that aside Islam, there was not even a prophet, Islam had never announced his prophethood even up to then. So she kept her integrity, her respect, her boundaries, her honor, even though actually there was nothing and she had all the means, she could actually be uh, living a lavish lifestyle and things, etc. She was living modestly, but she had, but not out of order, even though there was no guidance as such. So this shows, this is a lesson for us, for me and the sisters, ours as well, that even though you live in a society, you come into it, this doesn't mean that you should become colored in that the color, if it's a bad one, you should actually be copying the good one. You see, when fashion comes, or you may say, 
let's say the fashion of hijab have come the fashion of beard have come and people are following those fashion scarf etc that's not actually you may say grounded in in a sound belief it is just a, a following so they are not as tomorrow it will change their beards or their hijab will come off as well and shirts and pants and skirts and hijabat and jilbabs will go up and down according to so that's not actually integrity that like a goat you are not a goat or sheep you are a spirit independent allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla majd who has created you as as a crown of creation as a higher archy actually uh, you may say in the uh, all the creation and that's what many of the scholars say to the people who actually say evolution that people come from monkey that this is the highest human being can they you look they are not going any higher as such they are actually there actually so when allah jalla majd who has given you this karama and this this honor it doesn't befit the person to actually uh, disrespect yourself etc so one of the traits we learn from sayyida khadijah al kubra even though having wealth even though living in a jahiliya society she did not follow just the norm of the day and just follow the crowd she still actually has stood out even though there was no revelation no guidance as such actually so this means that even though okay you might not be so religious you say i don't know so, so much quran but you have sense of morality no matter where you are born you know about the you know truth is good falsehood is wrong zulm is actually or oppression injustice is wrong you don't need that before that uh, to tell so someone to tell you that it comes in the quran it does but there certain things the person should allah azza wa jal has built in the person already is programmed actually everyone knows truth falsehood truth is good falsehood is uh, false speaking lie is bad oppressing is bad justice is uh, good and similarly her whole life actually is filled with uh, such um, uh, you may say lessons uh, for us like one of the lessons i mentioned to you that okay you live here wherever you go it's all the earth of allah subhanahu wa taala but if all earth belongs to allah you belong to allah those people who are you are living in they might have gone astray they might have forgotten they might have distracted they might themselves not know So that doesn't mean you also follow them if they are actually going toward no you stand yours uh, on your feet and on your point and rather try to help them as well rather than you become colored in their color and the further lesson inshallah we will uh, mention some of them after the salah may allah subhanahu wa taala uh, enable us to actually follow the teachings and the life of sayyida khadijatul kubra رضي الله تعالى عنها ان الله عز وجل raise her status to the highest of high and may Allah Azza wa Jal grant us her shifa on the day of judgment jazakumullah sanjaza you can offer your sunnah